it is time for some big time football. And it is time to talk about the game we love. We are on the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Well, actually, it's really not that frozen, and it's not Green Bay, but it's Mount Airy. Big time football with the Mount Airy Bantams. And we are here today with big, powerful, enormous football players. Well, actually, they're not that big or enormous or powerful, but they are great, great young people. And it is time now to take you both on the field. Well, we're already on the field. And you are looking live, actually on videotape at the Bantams warming up. But it's time now to get into the game and then go behind the scenes to make sure you understand the team on the field and the awesome team off the field. It is a staple of youth sports, parents being involved in coaching. But for every football coaching dad who makes the Bantam so special, there are a couple of football moms. And let me see, now what do their respective to-do lists frequently look like? Oh sure, there are plenty of shared duties and crossovers between these lists, but here are some column A and column B likelihoods. Football dads, coach at practice, coach during games, Stress team, but silently hope that it is your little star who scores the winning touchdown. Football moms, schedule the school day and transportation after school to practice. Pack the meals, gas up the car. Watch the games hoping for touchdowns as a second priority, no injuries as a first. Then driving everybody home, making the post-game meal, washing the uniforms, and then getting everybody ready for another school day. And in return for all of this, a hug. But you know what? The hugs are worth their weight in youth sports gold. Denise, we first talked about the Bantams months ago and all. Your pride, not just in these football teams, but this organization is, is limitless. What makes the Bantams so special? I think one of the biggest things, it teaches the young men how to be men. It teaches them how to be a functioning member in society. It gives them something positive to look forward to. Uh, I mean, I come out here and I see kids who I've never met before, and they embrace my children as if they're their own brothers. You know, it's just a humongous family. The coaches, the staff, the board members, everyone just works together, and they do an excellent job to make the children feel like we all belong together. When we talk in a moment about the qualities that young people can take from sports mm -hmm. when it is played in the right sense, mm -hmm. we'll get into teamwork, but I want to preface that conversation by talking about the teamwork between the mothers and the fathers, the grandmothers and the grandfathers, the aunts and uncles. These youngsters don't get to play a single down of football if it's not for incredible teamwork behind the scenes. Absolutely, absolutely. I feel as though, you know, mothers and fathers work together. They work very hard to make sure that the kids get to where they need to be. You know, they make sure that they know, you know, how to act when they get there. Uh, you know, as long as you have a very good family base and you understand that your child needs something positive to look forward to, and the mothers and the fathers and the grandparents and the aunts and the uncles, everyone works together to make that happen. It makes it such a, it makes it a much better situation We've talked about this in terms of not just the Bantams, but a lot of youth organizations. The real key, and the Bantams underscore this, is the children have to be the first priority, the second priority, the third priority, every priority. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about this organization. There are plenty of organizations out there that say they are for the kids, but they may not be. You know, And it's, it's totally important for the kids to realize, not just the adults to realize that the kids are first, but for the kids to realize that they really are first. We're not just saying that. We really are here for them. You know and I hope you will be flattered by this, but one of my first contacts with the Bantams as an organization was to come to one of your board meetings, yes. and you feel that unless you have an effective year-around board, you're not gonna get the right things accomplished. Exactly, we are a working board, 
every single month, every second Wednesday of the month, we get together and we talk about things that have happened since the last board meeting, what we would like to see happen before the next board meeting, uh, any type of, any organizational issues, anything that has to do with operations. Uh, and I mean, a lot of times, because we're so closely knit as a family, we actually get into conversations about certain children and how they're doing excellent in school, or how this one had, you know, he got an award for being an outstanding citizen in school. And those are the things that we look for as well, you know. And uh, our most recent uh, meeting, we discussed, we had a shoebox fund drive. And um, every, all the kids, they just dug in their closets and they had their mothers and their fathers go in the closets and get as many shoes as possible. And we raised a lot of money. You know, and it was, it was really, it was special because everyone was working together as a team. It wasn't just the little guys or just the big guys or just the cheerleaders. Everyone came together as one and we all put all of our shoes together and sent them away and it felt excellent to be able to do that. We talk a lot about the student athlete, but normally that comes up in college discussions and it's frankly a controversial issue because not all schools do it the right way. You guys, even in a youth football program, are all about the student athlete and academics. So important. Absolutely, absolutely. It's very important for us to not just develop a child as an athlete, but to develop, develop them as an individual. You know, school is very important. Are you doing what you're supposed to do at home? Are you bringing home grades? Are you doing homework? Are you listening to your parents? These are all key elements that make a bantam. You know, it's not just the sports, it's, you know, it's everything, it's a whole package, you know, and our coaches and our board members do a very good job of making sure that the kids realize that it's not just about sports, it's about everything altogether. In sports, when it is done right, it ultimately is about developing character. Mm -hmm. How do you define character? I define character as being the type of person that you can walk into a room and you can stand alone and be your own person. You know, you're not, you're not hidden behind a name or you're not hidden behind someone else or a team or a coach. You're your own person. You can come out and, you know, your character comes shining through, you know. And some kids have to work a little bit harder than others to be, you know, a little bit more outgoing, you know. But that doesn't mean they don't have as much character as the next person, you know. It's some of the quietest kids in, on the team are the ones that I just, you know, you just, your heart melts when you talk to them, you know. They have, so, they have more character than, than some of the adults around here, exactly. you know. So. Denise, let's talk about the building blocks of character. Let's start with tolerance, respect for all races, creeds, and colors. With the KSL, we see many different teams of many different colors. They're made up of different nationalities. Our teams are all made up of different nationalities. And we feel it's very important that the children are aware of where they came from, but they also need to understand that we all make up the world together. And it's important that not only do we play against other people, but we play with them as well. So we don't, you know, we don't put up any, you know, screens, you know, if you're not, you know, if you're not this, you can't play or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big family. It's a melting pot, if you will. It's about tolerance. Yes. Let's talk about respect. Mm -hmm. You teach the youngsters, as we just discussed, to respect other youngsters, but self-respect in terms of doing things that are healthy is a big part of, if I may call it this, the Bantam's curriculum. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we try to instill in the children, you know, even when you're not out there playing on the field, everywhere you go and everything you do, you are a Bantam. You are representing all of us as a family, you know, so you want to do things that make people say, oh, wow, you're a Bantam. That's great, you know, and they take that to the next person. I saw a Bantam on the street and they were picking up trash or they were, you know, doing something civically responsible. You know, not just running around playing football all the time, you know, they're, they're actually doing things, you know. They're helping out, they're, you know, I, you'll see kids later on, they break down the field when the, when the games are over, they help in concessions, you know. So we try to teach them to be responsible, just not on the field, like you said, and not just to each other, but to themselves as well. You know, be a, a responsible young adult. I've known Denise maybe two and a half years now. Since Denise has been secretary, uh, the organization, the organization has progressed greatly. I like Miss Denise because she's a really cool lady.